Hello and welcome to week 11 in uh, the psychology of personality. And here we start getting into um, some of the great names in the field of psychology. And first we get to Erickson and then look at Carl Jung. Both of these individuals were students of Freud. They went in very different directions. There's no doubt about that. Very different directions in terms of uh, ultimately their theory of the development of personality. So we start with Eric Erickson, personally one of my favorite researchers, his uh, psychosocial theory of development um, shaped a lot of my thinking, continues to shape a lot of my thinking about personality and identity development. Now, based upon Erickson's stages, whereas trust versus mistrust, intimacy versus isolation, all those different ones, is that there's a Canadian researcher by the name of James Marcia who developed an idea that he refers to as identity status. And it's sort of the, um, a snapshot at any given time as to what your identity looks like. Now, I want you to picture this in terms of our identity made up of a number of different elements. I myself have a career identity, I have a gender identity, I have a marriage identity or a relationship identity. I have different roles in my life and they shape basically kind of like uh, pieces in a jigsaw puzzle that create an entire picture of my identity. Now for each one of those pieces, according to Marcia, I may be in one of any of four statuses. At any given time, I take a snapshot and that piece is in a particular status. Those statuses are based on the process of oh, let me crisis and commitment. Crisis means I'm looking at the options to make a decision. Commitment means I've made a decision. So career-wise, let's say I was actively looking for a job, I would be in crisis. That's just the word. I'd be looking in, I'd be in crisis looking. When I picked one and got it, I would be in commitment. So you see that kind of back and forth process, then that job goes away, I go back into crisis. You can actually use, you can use that term to kind of figure out how identity issues can send us into crisis. In a way, they send us maybe into an emotional crisis, but at the same time, we can also relate that they might send us into a choice crisis related to Marcia's theory. So, based on that framework as to whether or not that particular piece has enjoyed a crisis or a commitment or neither, you have one of four cells. So, foreclosure means I've committed but I've never really looked at the options. Achieved means I've looked at the options and I picked one. So, you went through both processes there. Moratorium means I'm currently looking, but I haven't made a choice yet. And then diffusion refers to the status of the, it's back burner, I'm not looking, haven't made a commitment. Maybe future decisions that I'm going to be looking at, like where am I going to retire or something. It is a part of my current identity, but not working on it right now and certainly haven't made any decisions. I want you to discuss areas in your life that maybe occupy those different places. Now, we can look at this in a couple ways. We can look at this as a snapshot where there's parts of my identity that fit in each one of those categories, but I can then look at one aspect of my identity and track it over time as it moved from one status to the next and maybe back and forth. You know, so there's kind of two different ways to approach using this theory in order to capture a status idea about the current status of your particular identity piece. This is this all comes together in actually a theory I'm putting together called puzzle pieces, which is a constructivist perspective on how we build that jigsaw puzzle ourselves uh, by actively creating many of those pieces. Some of them were inherited, some of them come upon us because of circumstances and others we carve out ourselves into the creating ourselves looking at that in the next in the quiz that's the discussion in the quiz i want you to examine where are you in erickson's cycle and you look at all those different stages that are there where are you right now 
And how are things going in terms of your successful transition through that particular stage? At that point, we switch to Carl Jung. Now, there's a lot of distance between Erickson and Carl Jung. Carl Jung was a, a very different sort of researcher, very different sort of psychologist. And he introduces, or I introduced as part of, you know, he's introduced all kinds of things. A uh, very brilliant person he was. And um, he talks about, in a very, very concrete way, we get this idea of balance in its modern sense, when we consider the notion that we need to keep a balance between all the things that we have going on, rest and work, sleep and wakefulness, fun and quiet times, you know, we have to keep those balances. Carl Jung was all about that, creating those kinds of balances. So the discussion focuses on how do you create balance in your life? Or maybe there, maybe you work too much and you need to create some more balance in your life. Now, the important thing about learning these things is I've seen many times where people go, yeah, you know, we hear all the time, you need to create a balance in your life, you have to do this, blah, blah, blah. And then there's the big but. But I've got all this stuff going on. That's not the approach. That's not the goal of psychology, is not to teach you that these things are real. That the goal of psychology is to get you to change your behavior. That in fact, if you do not achieve balance, if you do not work actively to achieve balance, you will be harmed by your lifestyle. So it's not just enough to learn about these things. I really encourage you to actively integrate them into your life. Otherwise, what's the use of studying psychology, right? It really is to lead a healthier life. So I just want to emphasize that this really is an opportunity to kind of deeply think about you know, is there balance in my life? Do I spend enough time with family? Do I spend enough time? Um, maybe I spend too much time with my family and friends and I'm not getting my work done. Where's the balance? And finding ways in which you can not only know that that's important, but actively engage it in your life. So we're going to be looking at the first discussion. The next one, it's a... The Crumble's theory of happenstance is a modern, actually applied to, it's a modern theory applied to career development that indicates that research has found that when we look at people who are very happy in their jobs and we ask them how they got there, what we see are, and many, many times, a great majority, just chance events that have happened along the way where they've said, you know, I met this person, we're at the same conference or blah, blah, blah. And just one thing led to another. I was in the right place at the right time and I landed here and I would have never seen myself in this type of position. And it is remarkable how many people that has happened to. Now, if we look at that in light of Carl Jung's theory of the collective unconscious, happenstance, as far as Carl Jung was concerned, doesn't happen, that these at a sort of spiritual level, there's sort of this communication that's going on among our cells that are beneath our consciousness in that collective unconscious that actually make these arrangements for people to meet. And this, this is where we get the concept of happenstance, chance meetings, soulmates, all of these sort of ideas reflect this notion that there's part of me that's communicating unconsciously and arranging for uh, the pathway of my life. And that's, so we're discussing happenstance in terms of just sort of chance events that may have happened that have been beneficial to you, but it really does relate to Carl Jung's theory of the um, collective unconscious. And finally, we look at the assignment, and, and I'm kind of a little bit reluctant about this one, but um, what I'm having you do is uh, to do a free version of the Myers-Briggs Type Inventory. The Myers-Briggs Type Inventory was actually developed based upon the archetypes and personality types that Carl Jung created and turned it the... Um, the Myers mother and uh, Myers Briggs mother and daughter team turned it into a paper and pencil test. 
It is the most popular personality test in the world. It is all positive. It does not measure personality defect or uh, personality problems. It types individuals into one of 16 sets of letters, each one of those four letters indicating their uh, preferences for behavior in four dimensions of the personality. I'm reluctant to do it because I'm a certified Myers-Briggs Type Inventory Administrator. And there's a huge difference between the tests that I provide and the materials that I provide when I'm doing that versus the free versions of these tests. However, they're oftentimes pretty consistent. You get the same four letters. Don't let them pigeonhole you. And if you want, do some extra research on what those four letters mean, what combinations of those four letters means. One of the things about the Myers-Briggs being the most popular personality test is people have written about it and they have guidebooks. If you know your letters or if you have two sets of letters that seem to apply to you, then there's ample materials out there both to guide relationships, to guide career development, to guide personality, spiritual growth, all of these things. Tons and tons of information have been provided in the public in the public sphere as to what to do when you know your type. Again, it's just one of many tests that are available for personal insight. This is a personal insight test. Uh, certainly you would want to seek out a, uh, an expert in the interpretation of these scores, like me, um, if you wanted to explore that even, even further. So, um, so enjoy that test. Uh, it's not the official one, but it should give you some starting points in terms of understanding how these particular individuals converted the theory of um, Carl Jung's personality theory into the most popular personality test in the world. So kind of a really, kind of, I think an enjoyable type of self-reflection that we're doing here when we're looking at our stages of development and how we've created who we are. We're looking at happenstance and the reality of chance events shaping our lives. And we're looking at a really, really cool and popular personality test, the Myers-Briggs. Many of you may have even already taken the Myers-Briggs. Let's see if you get the same letters. So the indicator as to whether or not your personality is changing or not. Okay, so that's this week's excitement. I look forward to the discussion this week. Take care and have a great week.